Thank you for watching this video from Kingsway Soft. Today, I will be introducing the Google Sheets components from within the SSAS Productivity Pack product. The SSIS Productivity Pack is a collection of premium SSIS components, which enable greater developer productivity and increases the power of SSIS. At the time of this recording, the SSIS Productivity Pack is on version 20.2.1, which offers three components for Google Sheets, Google Sheets Connection Manager, Google Sheets Source Component, and Google Sheets Destination Component. The Connection Manager can be used to establish connections with Google Sheets, the source components can be used to read or retrieve data from a Google Sheets spreadsheet, and the destination components can be used to write data to Google Sheets. Let's begin by creating our Google Sheets Connection Manager. Right-click on the Connection Manager area down below to add a new connection. Select the Google Sheets item to add this new Connection Manager. First, you can enter your spreadsheet ID. Our component supports two types of authentication modes. The service account option allows you to specify the account which will be used to connect to your Google service. You can store your certificate to be used for authentication in one of two locations, store or file system. Lastly, the certificate thumbprint option allows you to specify the thumbprint of the selected certificate in order to authenticate using your Google service account. This option is available only when your certificate location is selected as store. Today's demo will use authorization code as the authentication mode. Let's click on generate new token here, which will open up a new window. There are two types of authorization. The Kingsway Soft option will have the connection manager use a client ID and secret that is provided by Kingsway Soft for your convenience when setting up the connection. It's important to note that this should never be used for production purpose. The My Own option will allow you to use your own client ID and secret to connect to Google services. We will select the Kingsway Soft option. Today, I will use my default browser to sign in. If this option is unchecked, it will complete the entire OAuth authentication process inside of the toolkit. Let's click on Sign In and Authenticate. In our default browser, you can see the client ID in the URL field. I'll just enter my credentials here. As this is a connection to Google Sheets, we only request access to Google Sheets. Once you have authenticated your Google account, you can enter the redirect URL and click OK. You'll find options to specify the path to the token file on the file system and where to specify the password of the selected token file. Below are your token file details. Navigating to the Advanced Settings page, you can configure proxy server settings if a proxy may be required. There are a few options in the miscellaneous section, starting with the timeout option, where you can specify a timeout value in seconds for the connection. This is defaulted to 120 seconds. The API throttling rate option allows you to restrict how many requests you want to send to Sheets per second. It's important to note that while Google Sheets doesn't limit the number of requests a client application can send during a specific time window, Continually sending requests can exceed the rate limit and cause rate exceeded errors. This rate is set to 10 by default, and you can adjust upward from there for optimization as required. There is also an option for retry on intermittent errors. This option is intended to help recover from possible intermittent outages or disruption of service, so that the integration does not have to be stopped due to temporary networking issues. We have designed this option so it should only retry when it's deemed to be safe to do so, but there may be exceptions. Before we hit OK, we should test the connection to make sure our information is correct and we can connect successfully. Please note that the connection manager that we just created is a package level connection manager. For SSIS 2012 or later, you can create project level connection managers if you right-click the connection managers node within the solution explorer. Let's begin configuring our data flow task, starting with our Google Sheets source component by dragging it to the design surface. Double click to open its editor form. As mentioned before, the Google Sheets source component is an SSIS data flow pipeline component that can be used to read and receive data from Google Sheets. Let's select a Google Sheets connection manager. The Sheets option will have a drop-down list where you can specify the Google Sheets you want to work with. On the other hand, you can specify the named ranges defined in the Google Sheets you want to work with instead. You will then indicate the start row and the number of rows you wish to retrieve. When the read to end option is checked, 
The component will read all rows from the start row you have specified to the last row of the sheet. There are some options that you can use to indicate column names. You can choose not specified if the sheet does not contain column names. You can choose first row of sheet if the first row contains column names. You can choose start row to specify the column name based on the start row. There will be a fourth option called first row of named range, which is only available when you have selected named ranges previously. This option will use the first row in the named range as column names. The value render option allows you to determine how values should be rendered in the output. There are three options available. Formatted value, where values will be calculated and formatted in the output according to the cell's formatting. Unformatted value, where values will be calculated but not formatted in the output. Formula, where values will not be calculated and it will return the actual formulas defined in the cell. The date time render option allows you to determine how date, time, date time, and duration fields should be rendered in the output. There are two options available. Serial number, where date, time, date time, and duration fields will be returned as doubles in serial number format. The whole number portion of the value, aka the left of the decimal, counts the day since December 30th, 1899. The fractional portion, aka the right of the decimal, counts the time as a fraction of the day. Formatted string, where date, time, date time, and duration fields will be returned as strings in their given number format. Let's head to the columns page where we can see all available fields from the report type specified. By default, all fields are selected. This may not be the best practice. You should only select the fields that you need to use in the downstream pipeline components. We also have a refresh component button, which will retrieve the latest metadata and update each field to its most recent metadata. Let's click OK to finish configuring our source component. For this demonstration, we are going to add a dummy data reader destination component for the purpose of showing you how the data flows from the source to destination components. We can now execute this task successfully. Now let's take a look at the Google Sheets destination component. To demonstrate this capability, we will use a data spawner for our upstream data flow component in order to write to Google Sheets. This component is also available in our SSIS productivity pack. Now let's drag the Google Sheets destination component from the SSIS toolbox to the design surface and connect to the upstream component. Double click to open its editor form. We'll select the Google Sheets connection manager. There are six write actions available. Append, where you can choose this option to append values to a spreadsheet. Update, where you can choose this option to set values in the range of a spreadsheet. Clear, where you can choose this option to clear the value from a spreadsheet. Copy to, where you can choose this option to copy a single sheet from a spreadsheet to another spreadsheet. Create, where you can choose this option to create a spreadsheet in Google Sheets. The input column should be an instance of spreadsheet in JSON format. Batch update, where you can choose this option to apply one or more updates to the spreadsheet. The input column should be a spreadsheet request in JSON format. Delete rows or columns, where you can choose this option to delete rows using rows start index and rows end index, and or columns using columns start index and columns end index. Next, we'll specify a worksheet in the Google Sheets we want to work with. If you would like the first row to contain column names, you can enable this option. The value input option specifies how input data should be interpreted. There are two options available. Raw, where values will not be parsed and will be stored as is in the spreadsheet. User entered, where values will be parsed as if you type them into the UI. It follows the same rules that are applied when entering text into a cell via the Google Sheets UI. The insert data option specifies how input data should be inserted. There are two options available. Overwrite, where the new data will overwrite existing data in the areas it is written. Insert rows, where rows will be inserted for the new data. The batch size option allows you to specify how many rows to be sent per service call. To send all rows in one service call, you can use zero. The start from column option allows you to specify the starting column to write to. The start from row option allows you to specify the starting row to write to. The specify end row option allows you to determine whether you want to specify an end row. 
Now let's take a look at the columns page where we can map the columns from upstream components to the Google Sheets fields. As you can see, the mapping has already been done for us based on the name match. The last page is the error handling page where there are three error handling mechanisms to choose from. The default option is fail an error where the entire data flow will fail as soon as an error occurs. There's also the redirect rows to error output where the error output will contain the failed records with extra columns error code, error column, and error message. These three error columns can usually help you identify why the error occurred. The ignore error option is generally not recommended. We have now established our data flow. Now we can execute this data task successfully. This concludes the demonstration of the Google Sheets components within our SSIS Productivity Pack. There are many other components in the SSIS Productivity Pack that enable developers to accomplish more in SSIS in a much more productive fashion. Google Sheets is just one of the Google services that is supported in our SSIS product family. Thanks for this video. Please feel free to take a look at our other videos available for viewing on our website or YouTube channel. For further assistance, please feel free to contact us.